Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and thanks for watching. This is part two of quorum sensing in bacteria. So hopefully you had a chance to watch part one, and this is the conclusion. I don't know if I left you with a cliffhanger, but <laughs> I'll just review just briefly to sort of pull you into that. So here's the squid, bobtail squid, and it lives in shallow water, and during the daytime, it hides in the sand because it's afraid of predators. But at night, it needs to come out and feed. But also there's predators there that will easily spot it. As it turns out that there's a bacteria that lives with the bobtail squid that's capable of bioluminescence. And so the, the weird thing about it is that when the bacteria get into the squid, uh, during the day, when it's in the sand, they grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. But it's only when they're in high numbers inside the squid that they're able to bioluminesce. But that's okay because the bacteria, but the, the squid only needs it to bioluminesce at night in order to counter illuminate it to hide from predators. So as it turns out, the, 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 the light uh, is only made in the squid. And so when the bacteria are on the outside in the ocean, they're not making any light and so you know living in the squid is the good life you know they they outside you have to sort of fend from yourself and get your own nutrients which are really you know dilute in the ocean so when you live in the squid it's it's good and so like when you live in the ocean it's like a desert looking for food it's brutal and so you want to be in the squid if you're a bacteria and so it's like living the fat happy life sort of like how we live in the john muir house when we're taking our trip to yosemite and so, you know, the, the squid are born without bacteria. And so as it, as it turns out, they need to get these bacteria inside of them very early on. And so what we call that is being inoculated. The bacteria get into the squid. And so some of, the, some of what we think happens is that when the squid lays its eggs, the eggs are sterile. But what we believe happens is that the mother sort of loads them up with an egg sac with the bacteria so it covers them and so the bacteria are able to get into the into the the baby squid as the hatchlings uh, will get inoculated as soon as they can and so what's really cool is this has been studied in detail they won't go too far with it but the bacteria enter these eggs through these little crypts these little crevices in the side and so they crawl into there and they actually help uh, develop the light organ now this is remarkable they just don't that not only are they stored in the light organ but without the bacteria present the light organ doesn't develop and you're like well how do you know that well you could take the, the the eggs of the bobtail squid and you can put it in an aquarium and grow them sort of in the lab and then you can treat the the water with antibiotics so that there's no bacteria whatsoever and so as it turns out there's no worry because there's no predator in the aquarium. So don't worry about the bobtail squid not having bacteria. But as it turns out, when the squid grows up, the organ doesn't really develop. So that means that the bacteria are in some way producing, this is unknown, producing some kind of stimulus to the squid developing. That's a whole nother conversation. So as it turns out, the bacteria are pretty smart about this relationship. What's totally amazing is they don't make light all the time. They only make it, they don't make light in the ocean because when they're living by themselves, they're, it's, it's very dilute and so they don't make any light. But they only make light, this is the key point here, they only make light when their cell population numbers are very, very dense. So when there's many, many bacteria, that's when the light comes on. And so the so this is a density dependent behavior. In other words, when the population is really high, that's when they produce. So this makes sense because remember that the high numbers are at, at nighttime when the squid really needs the light. And so here's the question though. This is the big question. How can bacteria, they're supposed to be so primitive and so small, and how can they know when they're alone from when there are many others around them? How can they differentiate when they're alone because when they're alone, they don't bioluminesce, and when they're in a crowd, they bioluminesce. There must be some way in which they communicate. 
And so this is the, this is the trick that they use. And so the bacteria release small molecules. They diffuse, secrete small molecules. And those small molecules are called autoinducers. Autoinducers. Now this comes from the Journal of Organic Chemistry. So this is this is the source. These are the bacteria and these are the chemicals right here. There's different kinds that they secrete. And these are these small little molecules that are called autoinducers. Now you got to think of them as like little hormones that they're secreting. They're small chemicals and they release them. And when the bacteria are alone, they they still are releasing them, but they're so few the the chemical that diffuses away and it just floats away and nothing really happens and they don't really get perceived but when the numbers are really really high and they start making a lot of the auto inducers auto inducers all this chemicals are bouncing into other bacteria and the other bacteria are able to detect the auto inducer and when they detect the auto inducer that is what causes them to illuminate and bioluminesce like this in this picture and so they're using these mo molecules, these autoinducers, sort of as like a proxy for cell number. They, the, the bacteria can't count. They don't know when there's a lot. They're just sort of self-producing. But the thing is, not only are they re releasing autoinducers, they must have some sort of protein receptor in their membrane that receives, like little baseball gloves, that receives autoinducers. And so how about that? When enough autoinducers come to a bacteria, let me sort of illustrate this. If I let me illustrate this if I can. So here's the bacteria, and they've got these receptors, right? And so here's the autoinducers. When there's a lot of autoinducers, then the receptors get triggered. And then inside they start to whoops. Inside you go here inside I don't want to do that yes I do inside when they get the auto inducers then they start to bioluminesce and so really the what we're talking I want to get ahead of myself but the name of what all of this is about the fact that the bacteria make auto inducers and the fact that they can receive these chemical messengers is what we call quorum sensing so it's like a quorum and they can sense it. The bacteria like vote with these molecules. They're like chemicals that can talk to one another and not literally vote. But when they put their vote out and there's enough of these chemicals and they get counted, that's why it's like a quorum. It's like when there's enough of them, you have a quorum. When there's enough autoinducers, it then causes the bacteria to glow. And so this is huge because it isn't just bioluminescence. When there's enough bacteria, that's when they start doing bad things. When there's enough bacteria, that's when they start doing things. And so the real question is, you know, how does it all work? You know, it's it's being studied, uh, but it's, it's kind of difficult. Like, for example, the biochemistry is one thing to, uh, to, to uh, consider. Uh, we know a lot about it, and we'll be studying it in, in another video coming down the line about once the autoinducer attaches to these receptor proteins, there's a signal transduction that occurs inside the cytoplasm of the bacteria which amplifies that message and then genes are turned on and some genes are turned off. So there's a transcription regulatory mechanism at play. I won't get into that right now, but what's interesting is in order to really understand this chemical messaging, the quorum sensing, you kind of don't want you kind of want to move away from the squid because remember I was telling you before about how the bacteria do something to the squid to help them produce the light organ. There's a lot of interaction when you're talking about bioluminescence and another organism. Like for example, like these angler fish. Do you see how they have this little glowing thing? You remember this from the movie Nemo? There's Dory and Nemo. Remember they saw the light right like this? And so what we actually need to do, this is the real angler fish, we need to find even a more simpler model. And I mean by that is we need to be able to study the, the, the ability of bacteria to bioluminesce in high numbers where they're producing a lot of autoinducers. 
but maybe living freely, like not with another organism in symbiosis. And so quorum sen sensing needs to be studied more further uh, on its own. So as it turns out, you look at around for, there's a lot of Vibrio species, this is the genus. And so there's a lot of this quorum sensing going on and we frankly believe that all bacteria are communicating this way. And so as it turns out, um, Vibrio fisheri uses quorum sensing, but only in the squid. There's a Vibrio cholerae, which you might recognize this as causing the disease cholera. This is not so good. There's another Vibrio called Harvii. Now this one's really good, I'm gonna circle it. So this one right here, Harvii, if I can. This is a species that we really wanna study because it's able to bioluminesce all by itself in the ocean. And so we don't have to worry about any connection to the squid because that complicates things. And, and the same mechanism is at play. They only bioluminesce when the numbers are really high. And so there's no host association, so you can study it a little bit more clearly. And so in conclusion, quorum sensing, in other words, the releasing of autoinducer molecules and the, the fact that bacteria can pick those up by receptors causes bioluminescence. And it's based on high population density. And so that's why I've decided to include it in our discussion about population ecology. We will revisit this notion of quorum sensing when we talk about genetic control, as I mentioned before. So I hope you enjoyed part two of quorum sensing in bacteria. Thanks for watching.